What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Awakening World. It's Saturday night, and uh, I love our Saturday night shows when we have great music. And tonight is one of those nights. We've got wonderful music, and we have wonderful presenters. It's another collaboration, as we do once a month now, with Soul Search. And that means that one of my all-time favorite human beings is my co-host. And, of course, I am talking about the wonderful Tangila. Welcome, Tangela. Hi, Scott. Hello, everyone. It's so wonderful to be with all of you tonight. I always love gathering with the Global Peace Tribe and just feeling everyone's energy as we're all connecting. And Scott, I love always co-hosting with you as well. We have fun. We have fun. And we've got some wonderful soul searchers. Um, now, of course, our audience, our Zoom room regulars know all about soul search by now, but... We're going out to about 150 Facebook groups and pages, which means a lot of people are being introduced to the Global Peace Tribe, to the Awakening World, and to Soul Search. So for those, tell people a little bit about Soul Search and Soul Search TV. Definitely. So for all of you watching, Soul Search is an online platform and community that supports people on their spiritual and awakening journey wherever you are. And we do that by helping you connect to amazing practitioners like you'll meet today on this show. We have incredible teachers, healers, spiritual guides, all in our directory. You can go online, you can look for you know, numerologists like Dr. Joanne Justice or a psychic medium like Kelly Eckhart or Charlie Lamson or ceremonialist and breathwork practitioner and holistic health practitioner, Yuri Lee, and so many more. So really you can go in, explore many different modalities, connect to different practitioners, join our community on Facebook, and you can also attend our live events because we host uh, Soul Search Enlightenment Expos every month all over California, Arizona, and we are expanding to new locations. A lot of our global peace tribers, you guys are regulars at our expos, and we actually have one coming up tomorrow in Burlingame. So for those of you who are local to the Bay Area, come by and check us out. Scott will be there with us too, live as well as Eden. And we also have Soul Search TV which is our conscious content streaming channel where our practitioners create their own shows. Uh, we have everything from Asil Tuxal taking people on sacred earth expeditions from Guatemala to the Balkans. We have Jared the Medium doing mediumship readings, doing gallery readings in his show. 
We have all types of shows on psychic development, intuitive development, quantum healing with Darren Starwin, and many more shows launching soon. And you guys can check that out for free online on soulsearch.tv, also available on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Android TV, and our mobile app. So, you know, we welcome you guys to come in, check out the shows, dive in and see, you know, what sparks your interest. We have incredible, all types of incredible channels, light language, mediumship, uh, psychic um, development, and much more. So, you know, Soul Search TV and our directory and our expos, we're all here to really support you on your journey and also create and bring spiritual community together. Beautiful. And it's so fun because once a month, she brings some of her favorite Soul Search people onto the show. And so we're going to have a numerologist tonight. We've got a couple of psychics. We've got Yuri Lee coming back, who's going to lead a new moon activation for us. But it is Saturday night, and we always love to start our shows with our house musical artist, the one and only Alma Shar to get us rocking and rolling. That would, def that would definitely be me. And um, um, thank you so much for this evening. I'm really looking forward to it. But I want to just welcome everybody who's watching on Facebook and YouTube and all of our streaming partners, because with you, we get up to a rather a lot of people. Thank you so much. And so this is uh, a song called Just When, and Just When needs a Just When background. And so this is my Just When background. When you think that all is lost And the curtain looks too far Perhaps it's just the song of hope In the call And you trust in life it exposed Sit around and moan Where there is love, there's always hope Trust in your life and you will see That you reflect as me Another day is here for you I walk it through with you There is no doubt your heart is pure and true So I came to remind you No need to sit around and moan Where there is love there's always hope Life and you will see that you reflect as me. I am in all that you will see. Have trust in your life and trust in me. Dust yourself down and I will fill your loving cup. Oh, 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 oh. 
let's go to gallery view and all twinkle for anybody who's new we twinkle here on the awakening world and i actually enjoyed twinkling you mr omashar i just have all these sparkles coming down through my auric field Thank oh you my so <laughs> uh beautiful um you know i was listening to the lyrics of that song just now and really paying attention to them a little bit more than usual in terms of that particular song and that really is what this show is all about you know it really is about inspiration and you know sometimes life is hard there's a lot of hard stuff going on out there and so thank you Omashar, for how your songs really encapsulate what this show is all about which is to provide inspiration and to remind people that um by connecting to divinity by connecting to each other we can make our way through even the most difficult times. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And I want to remind everybody that you can get Omashar's music. Um, he's got five wonderful albums. Um, and most of these songs have been played on our show one time or another. And the best way to do it is to go to Omashar, his name, O-M-S-H-A-R dot bandcamp.com. Omashar.bandcamp.com and get his albums. Let's support this wonderful man who will be back to play another song uh, to close out our show tonight. Thank you. Absolutely. Tangila, you have four wonderful people tonight. I'm really looking forward to hearing what all of them have to say. And I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce our first guest. Thank you so much, Scott. And I am delighted to be introducing Yuri Lee, who is also a close friend of mine from Sedona. And I've had the pleasure of actually participating in her ceremonies and working with her. And she's an amazing intuitive channel, hypnotherapist. She's a ceremonialist who leads breathwork, past life regression. And also she supports people in holistic lifestyle practices. And she actually has her own line of Amanita mushroom products, which I love. And she'll actually be showcasing those tomorrow at the Soul Search Burlingame Expo. And you'll also be talking about how to heal past lives tomorrow as well. So we're That's really... Right. We're really excited that you're going to be joining us tomorrow in person in Burlingame, Yuri, because I know you're usually based in the LA or the Sedona area, but we're also excited because you're joining us tonight and you're going to, as the ceremonialist that you are, you're going to lead us in a new moon intention ceremony for the Leo new moon. So welcome and thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a, quite a journey. Uh, getting to know Tanjila was one of the first girlfriends I got to, to meet as I arrived. And I saw how she um, put this seeds from three years ago uh, in a living room our, of our mutual friend. And 15 or 18 of us gathered and we activated this soul search journey. And she's been amazing. And whenever I could, I joined her. Uh, fair and tomorrow I'm very excited to have my first journey with you and as you may all know tomorrow we are having this new moon as we are having this new moon starting we are also having a retrograde of mercury which a lot of people are not very happy about but I want to make sure that you are going into this very intense season with grace with new moon activation. So my name is Yuri, I'm a moon priestess. I work as Tanjila just introduced me, I work with the subconscious. So all my work is based on working with the moon energies or subconscious data. So I do past life regression, inner child healing work, all different types of a plant, shamanic ceremonies privately and in group, mostly in Los Angeles and Sedona. Um, I believe that all our programs from our past are the, the things that we really wanna look at. And if we can hear that, we can move forward. Most of my clients are 
sleep um, still stuck in the past and then they all want to have a better future. Most of them are living in this fear so that they live in the future. In order for us to move forward to the future, we actually must engage some of the stuck emotions from our past, past patterns, past relationship that we kind of put them underneath. So this new month's great for us to take a look at our past because it is the retrograde when we are engaging this, the reason why we get activated, why we get triggered is because our past gets presented somehow during this season. So we're not going back. We're not being challenged with the energy of Mercury retrograde. It's rather we're being shown. We're being shown of our past, what we must deal with. So if you are understanding of this, uh, this energy, then we can all bring it out to the surface. And then all we have to do is put an intention to release it as what is it that you would like to manifest? What would you like to create? What is your intention for this month? What is your intention for actually this new era, new time that we're facing? So with this energy is all about new. What you want to focus on is new opportunities, new friendship, new adventure, new place that I'm actually moving into a new place now. I'm actually excited to have some new friends coming into my life. As we are engaging these new opportunities, what we want to bring it up to the surface is what it is, is that I would like to let go from our past past patterns that gets repeated time after time, life after life. You all know what those patterns are. So since we have a large groups here, we cannot individually set the intention, but what we can do is if you have the uh, text where you can uh, put your intention on your text box, or if you're not able to, then I just invite you to write. What is this something that you like to see happening in this new moon phase with the Leo energy, right? Is there something that you have in your mind that, hey, this is something that I've been wanting to create. This is something I really wanted to learn. I really wanted to start creating this new relationship with somebody and I've been kind of delaying. But what is it that you really like to blossom out in this season? Because if you put this intention out at this moment, Leo energy will be very happy to support your journey. And then what we would like to see is there's something that is relating from our past that is connected to this new intention for it to blossom out. We want to let that out as we just recognize what they are. So what we want to do is, what is it that I am interested in creating? So we want to write that out. So let's all write them out. And if you don't want everyone to see, you don't have to um, write them publicly. Just write them in your notebook or your own textbook or your um, wherever you can and take a look at it. Right? Just to take a little moment to be with that intention. And then what I invite you to do is take a look at that intention and see how much you actually believe that this intention will become manifestation. How do you feel about that? Is there something, and then something may rise up as, well, if it wants to become 100%, what is it that I must let go? Is it your self-doubt? Or is it your certain belief of insecurity? 
or is this something that you're fearful of? What is it about this intention that you're putting it out as we are speaking, we are putting it out to the universe? Can you be a little bit more clear with that? So for example, Tanjila says, my new one intention is to start working out regularly. So Tanjila, what is it about you that if there is anything that is stopping you to work out regularly, what could it be? Because there's something. And that is what we can utilize with the mercury energy. Hmm. Well, I think... Um... I feel like I don't have time to work out. So that's something I also deal with. And trust me, for with a new business owner like yourself, I dealt with that. And then this is how we're looking at it. Okay. We have enough time for myself because we are committed to love ourselves, right? I know that about you, you love yourself, I love myself. If we do, then we get to create the time to dedicate loving ourselves because the more love that we put it into us, it will support us to do all the other things that we want to do. So this is a program that we're running within us. Both you and I are very hard workers. So we forget and then we're like, I don't have enough time to work out. However, it does not come from our time management. It comes from our past patterns. In order for us to achieve what we want, then we have wants to work without taking care of ourselves. It's a certain program that is within us. So that is what you want to uh, shift right? That is what I want to shift. Exactly. So that is what I want to shift. The, mm -hmm. I, I have all actually one of my rock star affirmations used to be I have more than enough time. I have all the time in the world. I have enough time to get anything and everything done. So it's time for me to live into that. <laughs> so what happens is all because what happens is you're looking at I need one hour of my time to work out mm -hmm. in that case you will get overwhelmed and your old program will be more dominant your old program which is running by your ego is more is giving you all the reasons why you can't so what you have to do is you're you're giving more uh, energy with your higher self as i start by i have five minutes to, to get myself to work out, right? If you do that, and it just becomes a part of your new program. And then suddenly five minutes, I wanna work out more because it's giving more power to your higher self, right? Once higher self is in charge, it becomes like become a normal routine for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so what am I supposed to say? I'm just, I just give so, it to the universe. That well, you are you are going to make a make a decision on. Okay, I have ten minutes. I have fifteen minutes. Just something very short because you do have that, and mm -hmm. then we can even do. You and I can go on a live together, and then we should be like walking, exercising, right? And then somehow we get very creative. It's all about also very being creative right? Mm -hmm. I can do that. Something that you can do and you can commit to. So once you start committing to something very small, and then you give yourself more of that energy towards that activity, then suddenly your higher self will create more time for you, for you to continue to exercise longer and more effectively. Mm, okay. Awesome. So I, I always have at least 10 minutes. So that's amazing. And I see Grace Denise is saying, this just came to me because I don't allot time for self-care, also exercise. Loving ourselves, we can bring love to the world. Exactly. Because 
where we are going with all our mission and purpose is basically to show the world other than all these agendas that we have for working, we're here to love ourselves. So if we don't give that as an example, then you know our work is kind of being degraded, right? Yeah. So we want to embody what we preach to the world. And that's what I'm also always working on because I'm with you on all of that. And I forget, right? So that is something we always want to go back to. If I love myself, what would I do is how you will know how to get very clear on creating that letting go process. Perfect. Thanks, Yuri. I love I loved the practical advice. And I love everyone else's intentions coming in as well. It's amazing to see. We have um, Omashar saying, my music to be shared with and appreciated by a much larger audience, thus affording me a monetary income. We have Sonia and Jeffrey, my intention is to go deeper into the center within the center. And we have Doug May, my int intention is to get focused and clear and start drafting and illustrating my first book on sustainability. And Ayata, activating and stepping more into my divine purpose. So amazing to see all of these intentions coming in from the whole community. Uh, and I see Scott, I am creating more joyful experiences. <laughs> You know, and I, I kind of relate to what you were saying, Tangela, because I've been saying for years I need to exercise more, and then the day flies by, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, I didn't go to the gym, or I didn't go up. And the gym isn't far away. The gym is upstairs, <laughs> right? Um, but, uh, you know, Yuri, I'm so appreciating this little homeopathic dose of your wisdom, just a little short version of it. Um, and I would love to let our audience know a little bit more about how they can get more of you. So I'm going to actually take them to two websites. Um, you do sessions and private session work with people. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. And yeah. the website is healwithyuri.com. Healwithyuri, that's her name, U-R-I.com. So tell us a little bit about yes. the demographic group that you enjoy working with. Yeah, so I work with um, with um, private clients who uh, wants to get very clear and with uh, where they want to go. Anyone with uh, purpose issues or depression, anxiety issues, physical issues um, and uh, physical pain or diseases, anywhere from physical to people who wants to expand their spiritual um spirituality so i have many different uh retreats and sessions that i've been studying from sedona i worked at um retreat centers over there and i was told i was guided back to move back to los angeles to touch more people's um in broader scale so now i do that so i just gave you a little bit of an example of how i work with individual with, with as an example with the tangela so i I guide them through so that you will get very clear with what you want to, what you want to address. And whether you're in a group session with me or privately, what I can tell you is I, I will bring things out from your subconscious that could possibly be blocking for you to move forward. So that's basically my work. So I do that through uh, intuitive reading, regression sessions, inner child healing, past life regression. I do mushroom ceremonies. And I also work with this wonderful mushroom called Amanita muscaria from Siberia, which is also very much of a theta mushroom. It works with your subconscious mind. So this is another invention and creation that I've been working through for last year. Um, and I have tinctures and gummies, uh, skincare line based on this. Amanita muscari is a highly, highly anti-inflammatory, and it's been known to us as um, a medicine of enlightenment. They could 
completely take us to connect to divine because this is not about getting high mushroom. This is about really opening our crown chakra and connect to your higher self and divine. Wow. Well, I'm going to see you tomorrow at the yes. of Soul Search. I'm going to go get some mushrooms from you. <laughs> I'll definitely look forward to seeing you, meeting, seeing you again in person. You know, some of you met Yuri. We do have some members of the Global Peace Tribe that are in the audience tonight, like Roger and Bonnie, who were there in Los Angeles when you uh, came and led a meditation there. So uh, I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow at Soul Search, uh, at the Enlightenment Expo. And thank you so much for giving us some wonderful wisdom. I know there are several comments uh, of people appreciating your wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Yuri. And we're excited to see you in Burlingame tomorrow, too. All right. And, and, and thanks, Scott. And Yuri will be speaking at 2 p.m. tomorrow. No, yeah. Was it 2 p.m. tomorrow, Yuri? I think so. Yeah, 3 p.m. tomorrow. And you'll be giving a talk on healing. Three o'clock, and it's going to be about healing with past life regression and Akashic records. Amazing. And so hopefully you guys who are in the Bay Area can come join us live, come meet Yuri live, um, and also have a taste of her Amanita mushroom coffee and tinctures that she'll have available for a sampling there. Um, you'll get a chance to experience uh, the Siberian shamanic mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> I have something and I, I, I have to share, which I gave you a sample of. I hope I'm wondering if you actually experienced it yet. I Did have you? this body butter called I am tantric. Yes, it's a tantric you body it. butter. But however, it's actually very um, healing on your body. It's it. It can really help with your pain because it's mm -hmm. a highly anti-inflammatory and that's actually edible. But you can put them on all over your body as well. It tastes like a white chocolate. So it does. It does. It, yeah. Thank you, Yuri, because you did share a sample with me and I have tried it. So her I am tantric body butter is amazing. And it does have the Amanita mushroom in there, which which has um, a lot of amazing properties. So thank you for sharing that, Yuri. And hopefully you guys can come visit us tomorrow. If you can't, we are now live streaming all of our talks from the expo. So you'll be able to tune into those on the Soul Search YouTube and Facebook. And then Scott, We'll be we'll also be live streaming tomorrow the session with you and Eden as part of the Awakening World Sunday as well as Charlie's. So that'll be fun. We've got a lot going on. It's quite a weekend. Quite a weekend. And you know, we always love on Saturday nights to have lots of music. And I'm really excited to introduce our next musical artist. Um, for some of you old timers, you're gonna remember her because she was one of our regulars back in the Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe days. And then she disappeared for a while, but she is back. And I'm really, really excited to um, introduce some of you for the first time or for the rest of you who are old timers to remember Pollyanna Bush. Welcome back, Pollyanna. Thank you so much, Scott. It's wonderful to be here. And I, I'm, I'm just thrilled. I love the conversation. I love the deep dive. I love the wisdom that's being shared. I love how people are being vulnerable in this uh, container here to be willing to open up and and share with us what their vision for their future is. And thank you for creating this beautiful gathering space, so to speak, um, for us to all evolve together. And that's what we're doing. And that's what it takes. It is. That is what we're doing. That's what it's that all about. What we're doing, so. so what have you been up to for the last couple of years? What are some of the highlights of your past couple of years since we last saw you? Oh my goodness. Uh, lots of grounding, walking barefoot, breath work, meditating, creating music, singing, uh, working with people to, to unlock their genius with their voice and heal. And, and I'm just loving to be able to walk with people on that path, my own, uh, remedies so to speak that i come up with and uh dancing i'm definitely getting back into my dancer body i've been doing a lot of contact improv and really enjoying that kind of way of communicating and meditating with other folks and yeah just uh, some new songs coming out and 
Actually, I was gonna play a new song, and and from what Yuri shared, I felt I feel like I, there's this other song that needs to come forward right now. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely about tuning into what's needed and expressing my music as a as a way of uplifting, bringing consciousness uh, through the vibration. Oh, actually, I recently connected with my former husband, and we re we we resurrected the music that we were doing when I was in my twenties, which is really phenomenal. And I realized, oh my goodness, I was actually channeling light language at that time. So maybe uh, maybe we'll, he and I will be on together at some point. So yeah. isn't it wonderful when we're able to revisit big parts of our life, including? previous spouses or previous relationships and come back together and find new ways to connect that are alive and dynamic. That's beautiful. That's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. And this, this music, it, it's called Obiba. It'll, it, uh, look for it. It's, uh, it's up and coming. It'll be it had nothing on the internet. You know, that was back before then. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite magical music. Great. Yes. Well, so you said that you get an inspiration from, yes. from Yuri. So, so what's the inspiration? Yuri, yeah, Yuri was talking about, you know, clearing out the old and and then also what are you inviting in? Like what is, what is the future that you see for yourself? What is the vision for your future? And I, I'm just going to, I'm going to piggyback on that because okay. I'm all about that. And, you know, looking at whatever limiting beliefs might come up uh, and, and to, you know, be, be bold and be willing to um, be with it with love, self-compassion, and also to allow it to teach me and show me how to release. And so that this song is called Walk Into Your Future. It was inspired by Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, which I, I'm, I'm loving a lot of. And um, so this is, I would say, amplifying what Yuri was talking about. And so I just invite everybody to be in that future that you see for yourself. And rather than it be um, the language of, I want it, it's, it is so. So this is the, this is the opportunity to, to breathe it, smell it, feel it, vibrate it as much as you can for while I'm singing the song to bring it as real to yourself as you possibly can. That it is happening now, because all possibilities, right? Infinite possibilities are happening right now. So you can actually conjure that up. You are a magician, we all are. You're a genius, we all are. So here we go. Take a deep breath. Let's all just breathe together. Inhale. Land right into your heart. Your heart knows the truth of who you are. Oh, my dear one. destiny and the 
Let's all give a beautiful twinkle and appreciation to that perfect song. You know, Dr. Laura just wrote, wow, Pollyanna, what a perfect song for tonight's discussion. It really spoke to my heart. Thank you. Um, and it's true. It's just a, a perfect song for us tonight, Pollyanna. I'm going to bring Tangela back up to say hello and give some appreciation. Hi, Pollyanna. Thank you so much. What a beautiful song. You have a gorgeous voice, gorgeous voice and gorgeous song for the new moon that we're all celebrating here together today. Thank you. Pollyanna is going to do another song for us in about one hour, but I do want to right away let people know about how you can get more Pollyanna Bush. And it's her website, PollyannaBush.com. It's her name. PollyannaBush.com. Definitely want to encourage everybody to put in your name and email address so you can be kept apprised of all things Pollyanna. Um, one of which is that you do personal coaching and singing lessons for people. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, yes, I've been coaching for over 35 years, and I do a very broad range of anything from working with vocal technique to help open up the instrument, also to actually healing with the voice. So there's just a, a huge range. I've worked at Chaplaincy Institutes. I've worked at um, women healing from addiction and, and from all of that side of things. And also, again, um, worked with a lot of people that really do long to sing and something is blocking their voice from coming out and expressing in the way that they know that they can that's in there to express so i know the voice very well uh, physiologically so that really comes in handy and then also i know that the voice is here ultimately that we all have this birthright to sing and um you know i'm 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 the it's like you know it's the speaking for the lorax you know speaking for the trees i'm speaking for the voices to say yes you can sing it's your birthright to sing and in this culture there's been a lot of oh you can't uh, you don't want to hear my voice you know i can't sing i only do it in the shower or whatever and that's just not true we're all born to sing and uh, some cultures know that and remember that and they do that every day um, so yes, you can do that. And I also have an online course that I recently uh, developed and released that you can actually, it's an eight module course that you can do at your own pace. So that's something that's also an option as well as working with me privately. And also circle singing. So you can ask about that as well. So, so many ways to sing and enjoy. Thank you so much for bringing so much joy to our world, Pollyanna. It's great to have you back with us. And we'll see you in a little Thank while. You. And Tangela, it is now time for you to introduce our next guest. Yes, and it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Joanne Justice. Justice, she is an intuitive practitioner and Chaldean mathematician numerologist. Dr. Joanne is actually a world-renowned authority in Chaldean numerology, author and founder of Numbers Are You and Matt Me Too. She's been a metaphysical practitioner in the field for personal development for over two decades and has clients worldwide. And through the techniques that she's developed, she actually supports you in discovering how you are technically wired from the inside out, revealing who you are, how you operate, what motivates you and what areas you should grow and develop based on an evaluation of who you are. Uh, she says it's like developing a personal navigation system. So Dr. Joanne Justice, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you here. And I'm looking forward to learning all about you and also Chaldean numerology and everything that you have developed with this um, whole modality, technique, science, and mathematics. Well, thank you for having me. I'm pretty excited. Um, I love my work. I, am, I have spent my whole life savings on this. 
my software programs I have written and developed. I have written a, an encyclopedia that I co-authored on numerology, where it started, the history, the systems, why they're not accurate. There is so much misinformation out there. Um, it's scary. But anyway, uh, even if you did research, you wouldn't be able to uncover all the secrets that have been out there for decades. So I am a logistics expert by trade coming from Silicon Valley, and I am intuitive by birth. So I always had the answers before the questions were asked. And I did quite well. And that enabled me to do a lot of things. But as a little girl at nine, when my father passed, I made a lot of mistakes trying to raise uh, my sisters and a household. So all of these mistakes, I thought, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But the truth of the matter is I'm here today as a result of all my experiences and how I can help someone. So when somebody calls me and says, how could you possibly understand what I'm going through? I said, are you kidding me? I can tell you exactly when I went through all that stuff. You know, I'm no different than you, but I'm further probably along on the on the level than you may be. So here's the deal. I have my favorite uh, product uh, is personal development. It's your life blueprint. So your name and your birth date inked onto your birth certificate is your life blueprint, which is your owner's manual, which is a character analysis of who you are. And because, because all the issues stem from past lifetimes, because I work with Kashik Record um, practitioners that we have interesting clients, it starts back then, and then your childhood is what messes you up until you get to some point in time where you know you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and you launch your torpedo and you get past that. So what I've got is the life blueprint. I am using Chaldean mathematics, I'm using um, technology and mathematics go back to October 23rd, 4004 BCE, which can be tracked based on sound, which is really, really important because the Western system is not based on sound. And um, Greg Braden's book, The God Code, explains all of the history in there. If anyone's ever interested, it's a great, great book. So for me, I have done well over 25,000 intuitive readings of people of all walks in life, starting with babies all the way up. And it's interesting, I'll give you an example. Someone might come to me and say, I wanna be an entrepreneur and I'll generate their blueprint. So I, as soon as I generate the blueprint, I tap into their energy and I know exactly what's going on, but I always wait to, when I ask the question to get the answer because I want them to answer the question. So the number one conflict for everyone until it's fixed is avoidance of confrontation. When you avoid confrontation, you give away your power. And when you want to say, no, 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 you say, yes, yes, yes. But what happens is, for example, um, if somebody wants to be an entrepreneur and I'm looking at their blueprint and they'll say, well, what do you think? And I'll say, no, it's never going to work for you. And they're going to say, and I said, unless you have a pile of money, a lot of funding, it's not going to work. It's still not going to work because you have impulsive and passive personal characteristics. That's how you're wired. If you had wired a little bit different with more successful numbers or aggressive numbers and a mix of them, um, you would be better off. You are better off in a partnership than as an entrepreneur, because once you get into a situation where the finances aren't what you think is going to be, you're going to get in the fear mode and then everything goes backwards instead of forwards. So what the, what the blueprint does is it gives you, it's just like having a, um, a crystal ball. I can see right into you. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you tell people you who you are. I only care about the little boy and the little girl from the inside out in your control panel. We all have one. We are all wired with various different frequencies, impulsive, um, aggressive, non-aggressive, uh, intellectual. We have all kinds. And what's on your blueprint, if you understand what your intellect is, your emotions, your personality, your purpose, your karmic uh, contract in this lifetime, what this means for you, your opportunities and your life lessons. There is nothing missing from this life blueprint. And also people don't realize what happens when you change your name. You change several of those components. So for example, maybe your personality is a beautiful butterfly, creative, social, and you change your name and that uh, the new uh, personal characteristic supersedes the butterfly into someone who's a loner, a hermit. The hermit loner doesn't like the butterfly. 
So people have no idea what happens when you change your name and how it affects you. But because I'm a logistics expert, I want to fix where it starts, the broken parts. And I all I know is to know yourself is the essential life skill for a first priority in finding purpose and improving your life. You can, you can be whoever you think you want to be, but if you don't know how you're wired and what that means to you, you're going to be up an uphill battle. I've done more than enough readings to tell you it's the same thing over and over again where someone will say, I had no idea. And yes, I have an issue with confrontation. Well, if you have an issue with confrontation, for example, and you have all these successful numbers, they become dormant. You can't use them. So having the life blueprint sets the stage of who you are, how you operate, what areas you want to work on, uh, what areas you excel in. It is a roadmap. It's no different than taking a trip somewhere and you have a roadmap to how to get there and, and when you want to get there. This is really important because this is where it starts. It starts in childhood and past lifetimes that creates the problem. And how could you know what the problem is to fix or who to go to? So in less than an hour, you can come to me. I'll generate your uh, life blueprint. I'll do an intuitive reading and you'll have everything you ever needed to know in less than an hour. And Dr. Joanne, this is amazing to hear. Um, what What is it that you use to develop? The, I know you mentioned something about the name, but what else is goes into creating this life blueprint? And where does the numerology come into it? Okay. Come into this? So I don't always like to call myself a numerologist because I'm way past that. That's why I'm sensitive about it. Okay. I'm a mathematician. So um, I'm actually working on a book that probably won't be published until after I'm gone because it's very sensitive. I have historical documents that shows where it really started, how it got off track. So my mother um, was the one who started with the Western numerology. I took over her work. She did it for five years. And then she was so excited. They put out this floppy on the Apple II C. That's how far back it was in the 80s, right? I think she was really had the first floppy or the first uh, computer program. And then everybody says, it's not quite right. And I said, okay. So my mom said in this lifetime, my mother was very intuitive, but she didn't have the skills to carry out the business. And because I'm an operations person and I come from the corporate world, I said, this is going to be easy. This was the hardest job I've ever had outside of raising twin boys as a single parent. So where it came from is this is the, the Chaldean mathematical formula based on sound and phonics. So if you look, if you look at the formula, there's numbers one through eight across the top, and then the alphabet is divvied up by sound under each of those specific assigned numbers. So my mom already had written the program, but there were a couple things she didn't quite get right, but she wasn't sure. So I connected with uh, William Mikeyan, who was originally the Western numerologist, went through the same process my mom did, said it's not right. And then when um, I started generating my own reports, I sent them off to him and I said, you can't be right if I'm right. So we got together, we wrote, we wrote the encyclopedia. It is thorough, you won't find another book like that. And the history is, how could Pythagoras be um, the father of Western numerology when he died 400 years prior to when it was introduced? So there's a lot of historical errors and Chaldean is based on sound and phonics. And on my website, Map Me Too, under the science category, there's a two minute video that shows you how sound and mathematics go together. And, and Susan B is asking, can you describe how someone uses this roadmap in decision-making? So once, once someone is able to get the roadmap from you, how can they utilize that for, for their life? Okay, so two things, first of all, um, it depends on what they want to know. Is it is this personal? Is this business? Is this a career? Um, is it a move? Whatever it's going to be. So based on whatever their question is, I can give them an answer. I also have, I do partner matching. I do a relationship compatibility. I do a name change evaluation and business naming. But I also have one of my, my oldest and favorite um, charts is the essence chart. It tracks you from age one to your current age, out five years in the future. So I have a lot of clients coming to me and saying, I gotta make these big decisions, but I'm not sure. So that 
essence chart will show you um, on a yearly basis, yearly, I don't do months or whatever, it's yearly, what's likely to happen emotionally and physically, and of course, the universal year. So it gives them a whole new perspective. And I can go back in time where a lot, here's a lot of my clients, um, a lot of things happened to them, you know, growing up. So I look at the whole chart. We start from age one and I go through the whole chart. I know when there's been devastation. I know when there's been almost a death. I know so much about them based on this track record. So what this is, this particular chart clears all the things that somebody doesn't even know it's in the subconscious mind. So the basis of having, knowing how you're wired from the inside out is a look at you. So if I were gonna hire an electrician and tell him I wanna hire a ceiling, I want you to put in a ceiling fan, what's the first thing he's gotta do? He has to go to the control panel. We have a control panel. We have an owner's manual based on your name and your birth date that's inked on your birth certificate. People don't know this. And then when you change your name, you alter part of those characteristics that create the havoc. And, the, and a lot of people are commenting about that, actually. Dr. Laura says, I knew that changing my name was a huge deal, so I never took my ex-husband's name. It was a good decision. So is that the kind of name change? Even when you take your husband's name, does that change? Or, Here, or a spiritual name? Here's how it works. It takes nine years for the new name, new legal name, stage name, um, nickname, doesn't count. The new name, legal, takes nine years for you to resonate 100%. But if you're using the original name and the new name, you've got conflicts because you don't know the difference between before and after. Now, on the Map Me 2 site, the second chart that you can buy, you can buy the life blueprint for someone who uh, has not changed their name. And the second one is if you've changed your name, I'm going to show you the difference between the birth, those three characteristics, and what happens when you change those three characteristics and what the con conflicts are. You need to know it because if you know it, you can do a workaround. But if you don't know it, you, you know, it's like a needle in a haystack. How are you going to fix anything if you don't know where you start? And to know yourself is the essential life skill. Bottom line. Wow. So this is pretty amazing. You have this technology and mathematics that really supports us in knowing thyself. It's unbelievable. And you know, it's funny because it is now people are coming out more and more. I'm getting I'm getting emails that, ooh, we're finding that Chaldean is really the... Um, it's universal to all cultures. Now there, there is the same type of um, program in the Vedic system, but the Vedic system is not universal. The Chaldean system is. And if you um, if you do generate a report from the uh, Western versus Chaldean, it's a difference between apples and donkeys. There's only a couple of little pieces that might be right and that's the birth date. But if you don't know how to um, reduce them down, like for example, I don't reduce a lot of my numbers down if it's a compound number, say a 14.5 versus a five, because I, leave, I lose two thirds of the story. I don't like the 14.5, but the five is a lot better. So if you reduce it too soon, you're not giving the person the information they need to uh, see the big picture of who they are. And I guarantee you, everyone comes in avoiding confrontation to some point in time when you say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired and they launch their, per, their torpedo and they're over with it. But that doesn't usually happen right away. That can go through cycles. And in my uh, blueprint, I have eight cycles. So you know what you're gonna go through. I give you all the possibilities and then the recommendations for any of those possibilities. So you're not walking away. And the life lessons are, are really what I'm famous for, what you need to work on to fix and why. And so a lot Joanna, I'm going to come in for a moment just because we're already five minutes over time. And, and again, this is just a little homeopathic dose. And I think our audience has really gotten a, a sweet taste of your very unique wisdom. Um, and uh, I do want to direct people to the website. It's mapme2.com, mapme2.com. So for those of you who are really intrigued and want to know more, go there and then click the match button, learn more. And that takes you to what she was just talking about. And then you can really go a little bit more in depth because this is obviously a science that she's created and we can't explain a science in 15 minutes. 
Um, but you can learn more by really learning, you know, what she's these videos that she's created of what's in the blueprint, benefits of your blueprint, um, and you can get started. So again, it's mapme2.com, mapme2.com. Uh, and you can also find her on Soul Search. You know, all of the people that are on tonight's show, uh, again, Soul Search is the amazing guide for finding everything, including a unique um, numerologist. Uh, so here she is on Soul Search, uh, just as you'll find all of the people who have a beautiful profile page. And if you want to contact her, go ahead and go into the Soul Search profile for her, and uh, you can contact her and send her a message and continue the conversation. Dr. Joanne, thank you so much. And I really acknowledge many things that I learned about you. Raising two boys as a single mother is an extraordinary achievement. And I also heard what you said at the beginning, that you've invested so much into creating this new science. So thank you. And God bless you for the beautiful work you're doing in the world. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Justice. And I see Omashar saying, Dr. Joanne, amazing work. Thank you so much, George Noble, acknowledging the passion for your work. Yeah. And Susan B saying, your numerology book must be very interesting. And so a lot of people were requesting your website during your chat. So thank you for introducing us to this uh, Chaldean numerology and mathematics. It's definitely new for me. And I'm excited to dive in a little bit deeper um, and to learn more about how our names and the numbers that we are born with really just can help map out our whole lives. Scott, isn't that amazing? Fascinating, fascinating. I'm sure people are going to want to get more by going to uh, your website. So thank you very, very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, uh, Tangila, the next person that I'm bringing on is somebody that I've just really grown very much respect for. Um, I so appreciate people that are really tapped in and are clear channels for spirit to flow through. And Rhea Mana is one of those people, whether she's singing or speaking, um, spirit flows through her in really beautiful, beautiful ways. And she even wrote a book called The Awakening World, um, which is rather appropriate, don't you think? So um, with no further ado, and I, I chose to put Ray Amana on right kind of in the midway point of the show, because again, she is very bright light. Who oh, I had the honor of uh, going to a concert that she gave on Thursday night, right here locally in Berkeley. So Ray Amana, welcome back once again to the Awakening World. Oh, Scott, thank you so much for having me. It is such a blessing to be here and to hear all the wisdom that's being shared. And I love that tonight's show is focused on healing. And for me, I feel like it's uh, this, this healing journey that we step into is this journey into wholeness, is this journey into full self-expression. And so much of the work I do is connected with the voice and helping people find their full self-expression. And, and connected with, um, with singing and accessing the power of, of the voice is connected with a lot of mysticism and accessing the power of the word. There was a time in history where we had the power of the word to speak reality into creation. And we are still creator gods and goddesses speaking reality into creation, but most of our creations are a bit conflicted. You know, how often we might say, I want, you know, X, Y, and Z, but then our, our thoughts, our feelings, our habits are putting us in a different direction. So. I use uh, singing and song and the voice to help us get fully on the same page with all parts of ourselves, our thoughts, feelings, actions, words, behaviors, so that the power of the word can be restored within us so that we have the capacity to speak goodness, blessings, truth, uh, abundance over all creation and that we have then the capacity to create heaven on earth through our words and not only through our words individually, but also to recognize our role as part of the, the whole, part of the collective, and this movement back toward unity consciousness. And, um, and for me, so much of healing, it's, uh, it's self-healing, 
it's also you know healing of one another but so intricately connected with the earth and to recognize our place as these acupuncture points that are positioned not in isolation from the totality of the ecosystem, but that the people of a, of a location, of a town, of a city, are exhibiting the, the habits, the patterns, the tendencies of that spirit of place. So many of the issues that people face, you know, they're not just their issues alone. They're issues of the ancestry, they're issues of the, the ancestors of the land. They're byproducts of belief systems in the collective consciousness. As I've learned about um, energy and reality, a word that has come across my path is um, ectoplasmic reality. That we have this light, this light energy that is imprinted everywhere we go, everywhere we've ever been and everywhere we will ever go. And the way that the, our environments receive these energetic imprints is irrespective of time and space. So one example that I'll give is years and years ago, living in New Jersey, um, I was married at the time and my husband and I really wanted to buy a house. And so we were looking around uh, for houses and, and actually the reason we even started looking was because I had a dream that it was time for us to buy our house. And so we, we start looking and we go into this one property and I had never had a sensation like this before but I could see that I already lived there. It was as though I already lived there. I could see my energy all over the house and I'd never had an experience like that. And it turns out that we, put an offer in on the house and we got the house and it's the house that my children still live in. And you know that was more than 20 years ago. So, you know, with that said, we all have been places or will be places with this energetic signature imprinted. The place where it can get challenging is, you know, in our, our family of origin locations where maybe we grew up with the certain beliefs certain beliefs we had about ourselves, certain beliefs that others held about us. So we go into those locations and those belief systems almost act like a, a template that we organically step into because we don't know a difference. So in much of the work I do with self-healing and working with the, the, I won't say healing of others, but the, the upliftment, the remembrance, the assistance of helping others remember who they are, there's also an aspect of working with the earth working with ourselves as these acupuncture points so that we can help clear the field, so that we're not just like caught in these loops that, um, that came from, from another time or place or something that isn't part of our conscious choosing. And, uh, and you know, when we were in Berkeley for a couple of days on Thursday and Friday, one message that was really coming through is we are the miracles for one another. We have that capacity to be the saints and sages for one another, to work with our connection with ourselves, our connection with spirit, our connection with the earth, and to use that connection to uplift one another, to take every moment, every opportunity to speak goodness over one another. And, you know, in this kind of, in this changing world, in this awakening world with, you know, the bumps that we may experience along the way, that if we're needing assistance, or if someone else is needing assistance, we could be that assistance for one another just by saying a prayer or uh, you know, speaking words of, of, of affirmation, of naming a reality over someone. And a big part of my work is recognizing that our words have power. And when we come from that place, that we're not just at the effect of everything that's happening in our lives, but that life is happening for us, not to us. And how can we use our words, our life, our expression to assist and uplift one another. And you know, one other little thing I'll say along these lines is, you know, it's a message that came to me a, a long time ago was that, you know, what if every, what if nothing matters? What if like nothing matters but the present moment, that all there is is this present moment? What if we lived life that way? And simultaneously, what if we lived life as though everything matters, as though absolutely everything we do is a catalyst to the future. And in that space of full presence and full presence with no future and 
future projection with maybe no presence. How do we live in a way, how do we want to show up and be our best selves, give the best version of ourselves? A um, little bit of a confusing, a confusing segue, but um, just to, to tap into that space of the, the almost like the zero point access. And when we can gain that zero point access, we have the capacity to reset. And that reset creates the future, but we can't go into a future creation. We have to forget about the future creation in order to access the zero point. So I have found that we can do that with singing, with group singing, with activating the unified field through joining our voices, and also by singing to the earth. In my experience, once we sing to the land, it breaks many of these loops and cycles that we may find ourselves subject to. So I was thinking of singing a song, and I was the song that I want to sing is, um, it works with the mantra, Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. And this mantra I've used for years and years and years. And I was with a friend, and we were, chanting the the 1180 names of the divine mother and it took like an hour and after we were finished i couldn't even see straight i didn't know who i was where i was and i got into my car i was in san diego and started to drive back to los angeles and as i was approaching the city i could see the buildings and the smog and and i just felt overwhelmed with this love and this grace and this recognition that any avatar or fully realized being, once they come to that point, all they want to do is alleviate or pray for the alleviation of the suffering of humankind. And when we can recognize that not only are we at the effect of all the things that are happening around us, but when we can elevate our consciousness to recognizing that we can contribute to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings, it puts us in a different relationship with our karmic debt, with our fate um, and with the world around. So this song is uh, using the power of our word to name reality as we want it to be and also cast a blessing across all beings. And I would ask Scott if you have any questions or if you want to make any comments about anything I said. Uh, well, you know, one of the things that I, I mean, I appreciate everything. There's a lot of comments coming in um one person was asking do you think your children also had that same connection to the house uh that they're still there um so that was a question that came in for you um and there are these magical moments in life and i think a lot of it has to do or we have more of these magical moments when we are really connected to nature when we're not so connected to you know the illusions of the the illusion of separation um but when we are more connected into the the memory the divine remembrance that we are multi-dimensional beings existing in a vast extraordinary way that our little brains can't really comprehend and i think one of the reasons i so respect you and your work is you spend so much time in nature and you spend so much time singing. And I think time in nature and singing are both wonderful ways to disconnect from the matrix, if you will, and connect to that higher, that higher plane, that higher space. So I guess I'd just love to ask you to share a little bit more about how you make the time for that and any, any tips for our audience of how to disconnect from the matrix and more singing, more time in nature, or other tools to be connected in the way that I experience you. Thank you so much, Scott, for that. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it, it really, things, my trajectory shifted a bit during COVID, because before that I was uh, teaching breath work and singing, and I was performing in concerts, and then 
once COVID happened, I was just sitting in my house, <laughs> like many of us were. And I was living in Topanga Canyon at the time, and I would sit outside and I would do my morning practice, um, which was a chanting practice. And I would, I, at some point, I just started singing to the mountains. And days of that, I felt that they really liked it. And that was what started to open up this recognition and this remembrance of this deep love I had for sacred mountains. I had studied with the Caro, who come from the Andes Mountains of Peru, and they have a relationship with what they call the Apus, who are the sacred mountains. And they have ceremony to offer, to make many offerings to the elementals for the health of the village, for the success of the crops, to bring the rains. And I had fallen in love with the Apus in the past as like these, these master teachers that are sitting here disseminating wisdom. And the teachings of the Apus or the Apukuna, which is the collective wisdom of the mountains, is that the transmission comes from the heavens first to the mountains and then down through the mountains and is disseminated through the earth. So as I was sitting outside and singing to the land, all this came back to me. And then I, I reconnected with my love of, of sacred sites and my connection with the spirit of place and the earth keepers who are, it's said that they are these beings like the archangels that, that have dominion over a certain location on the earth and they tend to it, they sing to it to keep it living and thriving. And so I just opened up this, uh, this pathway and also then I, I found Freddie Silva who studies the geomagnetics of certain sacred sites. And it was during the pandemic and he was teaching a workshop in Sedona in person. And it was about ley lines and sacred sites and I was ready to be in person with people so I went. And again, it just opened up this relationship I had with the land. And then the more I sang to the land, the more the land was inviting me to sing. I started to get a calling to go and sing to sacred mountains and uh, after a few months listened to the calling, I, I was a little bit like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> you want me to go and sing to sacred mountains? How am I going to make a living doing that? But when I answered the call right away, I was invited to lead a women's retreat in the Ko'olau Mountains of Oahu, Hawaii, then a private retreat in the Grand Tetons, spent time in Sedona and the Chiricahua Mountains of Arizona. And I sang to the mountains and was so renewed, restored, revitalized, and was shown that indigenous cultures, original people from all around the world, knew to sing to the land. They knew that the land is singing, and as we sing to it, we help it keep itself living and thriving. And also it contains a memory of who we are. So as we sing to the land, as we give to the empowerment of these sacred places, where our power is restored. And I know I'm going on a long way around of answering your question, but one other thing I'll say is, um, so I'm having a retreat in Mount Shasta in August, and we did this last year. And from the first time I went to Mount Shasta and I, I sang to that mountain, it was so grateful to be sung to. And so when we go to Mount Shasta, we sing to that mountain for its empowerment. For the empowerment of this master teacher, for the balance of these elementals, for this spirit of place to be restored and amplified in its sacredness, there is, like, you do that for, for a place on this earth, you do that for our mother earth, what she gives you back is there's no way to measure it, there's no way to quantify it. The healing of things you didn't even know need to be healed. So, you know, what I would say is just go out for a walk and hum, you know, just hum. Ask permission before you start your walk and ask permission to walk. Ask for the, the spirit of place, for the elementals there, for, for God to come and to be with you and to teach you and to give you messages and to heal whatever needs to be healed, to go into nature, to ask to be harmonized with the land. Like we live in these little boxes, we wear shoes, we drive cars. There's so much disconnection that happens and it's a, you know, it shows as a byproduct in our emotional bodies and the way that we feel and our health. And so when we can just come back to that connection, just go out in nature, send blessings. You can rub your hands together. I love to do this for the kids. We can do it right now. Rubbing our hands together 
and then just pointing our hands toward the earth and sending love and blessings to our mother earth to the land that you're on right now and our mother earth is a sentient intelligent being and she knows you once you start to feed her she knows you she knows your footsteps she knows the pattern of your breath of your heartbeat and she is loving us all the time and when we flow energy and give energy and give love we're opening the conversation it's like you know if i see dr joanne i say oh dr joanne you're so beautiful you know it's like it gives us a point of reference a point of connection and when we send energy like this to our mother earth it's like i see you and then it opens up the flow of conversation and um so those are a couple things that, you know, a simple mantra practice, even this mantra that we'll sing, uh, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Um, sing that for the earth. Just like sing for no reason at all, not to get anything back, but just because you're blessing the earth. And I guess that's where I'm going to stop with that. Priyamana, <laughs> <laughs> I so appreciate you. And you know, it is true. You know, um, the most popular movie of all time is Avatar. What's the message? I see you. There is, I mean, if you, you know, if you want to get cosmic, you know, there's only one divine something, but we've come into this illusion of separation so that we can see ourselves and see each other. And to see all and to see the divinity in all as you know, you've heard me say it, that's my mantra, you know, is like practicing seeing the divinity and all, and, and then, then to sing it, wow, that like takes it to the next level. So I mean, thank you so much. And I know we're a little over time, so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and please play and lead us in this beautiful chant that so many of us love. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to make a condensed version of it. <laughs> but you don't have to, you, you don't, 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 don't let that, don't let that uh, stop your flow. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. There's some English words too. In the naming of this prayer, the prayer of the, the prevailing of the awakening world, of heaven on earth, of all beings being free. in with our hearts, joining our hearts in this field of love to contribute our love field to carry this prayer. From the sun that rises to the sun that sets, from the moment of birth to the moment of death, every knee shall bow, every heart shall wake when the truth of love pours through this place. From the heart of the earth to the heart of the sun, the four corners of space in the seven directions, my heart is on fire with the beauty of it all.
Sabasta Suki no Mantu Loka Sabasta Suki no Mantu Loka Sabasta Suki no Mantu Loka Loka Sabasta Suki no And if we can remember that when we place our selves in service to something greater, that that is the ultimate remedy for anything that ails us. I'm going to read just a few of the comments and then take people to your website. Um, Tarina Joy writes, thank you, Rhea, for the blessing of the beauty and magic of your voice, of your music, your words, your wisdom, and your heart. Such deep gratitude and love. Kelly writes, so beautiful. Thank you so much, Ray Mana. Um, uh, Kelly, uh, one of our regulars, a wonderful psychic in her own right, writes, all you are saying is so very resonant. And Sylvia, another one of our regulars, says, I sing Loka Samastama Sukino Bhavantu with the trees, and I rest my bare feet and hands on them. Well, I think she does that daily. I know she's talked about that. Roger and Bonnie write mesmerizing. And Karen S. says, I was singing along with you, Rhea. You know Karen S. She's one of your students. Yes. yes. So speaking of students, um, a couple of things. Again, uh, you've got this wonderful retreat happening. It starts in like two weeks, right? Yeah. Yes, we're getting there. We only uh, have your spots if anyone right. is interested. So to learn all about Rhea Mana, go to her website. It's her name, Rhea, spelled R-E-Y-A, Mana, two N's in there. So it's Rhea, M-A-N-N-A dot com, Rhea Mana. And that's where you can learn all about what she's doing, including <laughs> her upcoming retreat and also her song workshops. <laughs> and you have another singing circle that's going to be coming up soon as well, correct? Yes, um, I have a school called the Songkeeper School, which teaches sacred singing, earth honoring, and ritual. And we start our next session on September 7th. And this time we'll be working on learning how to use our voice for healing. And actually, so it'll be vocal sound healing that we can use with uh, private clients. So if anyone feel is a sound healer and wants to add this component of using your voice for sound healing. Also, we work with healing the self um, and sound for alchemy and the healing of the earth, of course. And you can um, email her uh, or you can go to her contact um, information, uh, which again, you'll find on her website, reyamana.com. And then I'm putting into the chat box um, for our local Zoom rumors, um, her contact information. But if you just go into reyamana.com and then put forward slash contact, which is what I'm doing right now, and I'll show everybody, that's where you can give her your information and let her know if you're interested in coming possibly to the retreat or possibly uh, being involved in her next Songkeeper School. Um, and the Songkeeper School is online, so that's available for people anywhere. Fabulous. Um, Thank you so much. I know you're in the middle of traveling and tours and getting ready for your retreat. So thank you for taking the time to be with us again this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Scott. It was a blessing. Thank you. 
Um, I'm going to take a moment, you know, we really like to honor our local um, global peace drivers. And one of our regulars who's been with us for years is Carol Craig. And I just learned that Carol um, had a, a pretty challenging experience with somebody close to her literally dying in her driveway yesterday. Um, so Carol, I don't know if you wanna actually come on camera. If so, just raise your hand, use the computer, uh, you know, where it says raise hand on your toolbar and then I'll see that you wanna come on. Otherwise, we'll just go ahead and, and pray for you in general. And, you know, a reminder to everybody that I like to, the prayer that I learned from Paramahansa Yogananda, that I think is the most powerful prayer, according to Yogananda, is simple. Maximum grace. Maximum grace for whoever we're praying for. Because the truth is, we never know what's best for someone. We don't know if it's best for them to get the job or not. We don't even know if it's best for them to heal from the cancer. But when we pray maximum grace, then we are kind of calling upon and acknowledging that it's grace that is when the miracles take place. And that in fact, our very fact that we are alive is grace, that we're healthy is grace that we are abundant is grace. And so when people are in need, praying for maximum grace is a very powerful way to do that. So uh, I'm just gonna ask us all to take a moment and put Carol Craig into our hearts. And uh, maybe as Rayamana, I'll bring Rayamana back up here and Tangiel up here for a moment to help out a little bit. Um, as Rayamana showed us, let's do the, do this and maximum grace for Carol Craig and all those impacted by this sudden death. Maximum grace. Maximum grace. And at the same time, maximum grace for anyone in your world, those of you who are listening and watching, now sending prayers to anyone in your world that could use a boost that might be going through a challenging time. And have a minute of silence as you pray and send maximum grace to those beings in your world, in your orbit. Thank you. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Tangila to introduce us to our next guest. Thank you, Scott. And maximum grace and blessings to, to dear Carol. And thank you for that beautiful song, Ray. It was really beautiful. Thank you so much. And Really, and I love, you know, my husband and I just came back from Mount Shasta. And so it's such a beautiful, special place in our hearts and so amazing. You're going to be doing a retreat there. And I love, I love your whole story about singing to the mountains. We actually live in Sedona and, you know, yes, the, the whole energy of living and being and, you know, communicating with, with Mama Gaia. It's so important for all of us. So thank you for that beautiful reminder. Oh, and, and you know what, Angela, we should let people know that your final two um, guests are going to do psychic readings. Yeah, so, yeah. So if somebody's <laughs> interested in getting a reading, uh, raise your hand. We do want to use people who have their cameras on. So if you're interested in getting a reading, and that can include other presenters, it doesn't have to just be our participants, uh, do the little hand raising thing. You'll find it on your toolbar, like I just did. And that way our readers can see who wants to get a reading. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Tangela. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for that reminder. And I see a lot of raised hands already, of course. And I'm so excited to be introducing our next guest, who is an amazing psychic and medium, Kelly Eckhart, 
She is uh, based in Sacramento and she is an evidential medium, animal communicator, psychic, author, speaker. She also has a beautiful crystal store in Sacramento, Moxie Crystal. So for those of you local to the area, you can go visit. But Kelly is an evidential medium. And so her job is to provide you with proof of life after death. She brings through many such things as um, your spirit, your loved one's spirit, personality, shared memories. Uh, she's a channel for spirit to speak with you. And she's not in charge of who comes through or what they tell her. She just trusts and she asks you to trust that spirit is working in your highest good. Kelly also hosts both in-person and online events, including platform readings, tarot trainings, gallery readings, um, online group psychic readings, small group readings on Zoom, and much, much more. So she is really a dynamo, and I'm so excited you could join us here today, Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tangela. And uh, I want to say thank you for having me here. Uh, it's been such an honor, and I've enjoyed everything so far. I'm like writing everything down. So thank you, and I, I feel so blessed to be with all these people tonight. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Well, we're blessed to have you. And, you know, you are, you have, you're a woman of many talents, including being psychic, medium, spiritual teacher, guide, and much more. So I don't know if you want to introduce a little bit about yourself. And then I know we have a lot of hands raised as well. So you can let us know how you'd like to proceed. Well, I was just going to tell you a little bit about myself. And then when I come to work with you, if it's a psychic reading, let me know like your specific question. If it's mediumship, let me know. Um, a relationship of somebody you want to connect with, but don't tell me any other information when it comes to mediumship. I like it to be evidential. Uh, I've been doing this work professionally since 2015. Uh, I've had the gift my whole life. I'm somebody that remembers a lot of past lives. I actually remember the physical sensation of being born and my first year of life and um, being so connected to the spirit world for the first seven years of my life because I had three near-death experiences as a child and another one as an adult. And so I've always felt the connection with my angels, my guides and the spirit world. And I do collect, connect directly with spirit. I know some mediums like to go through their guides. I go straight to spirit. I bypass the guides. Me and the guides are good. Um, and sometimes the guides will chime in when there's like psychic work that needs to be done, but I'm always right with spirit. So um, I'm going to just kind of, I, I'm feeling really drawn to Carol here. So if I could bring Carol up, I would like to work with you. If someone could bring her up. There she is. Hi, Carol. How are you? <clears throat> there we go. How, how can I help you tonight? Did you want a psychic or mediumship? A psychic reading. Um, okay. And do you have a question? Well, I'm. I'm being I'm feeling over the last year that I want to leave where I live and move to Ashland, Oregon. I and um that would be all on my own. <clears throat> but I'm and I just want to know if you have anything about that. So when I tune into you, I feel like you're quite independent and you've always done things kind of on your own or your way. Um I feel like you're set in your ways but you're open to change, which I think is really positive because a lot of people get stuck and afraid of change. Yeah. And that's when we get stuck in, in sort of where we're at. So I think that's all positive. Um, I feel like where you're at now, you don't necessarily have a huge support system either. So it's not going to be much different. I do feel like that you're actually going to find your tribe or your people there. I feel like you're going to be matched up or immediately kind of run into the people that you need to be around. It's more of a vibe that I feel energetically is meant for you. So I do think this would be a positive change. I want to say, though, I feel like the best time to move would be spring. I don't feel like now is a good time. I feel like you need to wait out till spring. And I don't know why, but that's what the, the, the universe is telling me. So I hope that helps. Um, yeah. If you, do, do you want me to keep doing readings? Cause I can get through a lot of people, probably everybody up there. Um, if that would we, be fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd love, that way lots of people can, can yeah. get uh, some support. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. That was very helpful. And, and I, I agree with the time yeah, you're gonna meet somebody that's like a soulmate like a, it could be like a best friend but it's like a companion i feel like when you get there 
It's almost like you guys are drawn to each other. The universe brings you together because you're like-minded souls. You're on the same energetic level. And that's why you're being pulled there. Yeah. It's like the universe is trying to help you on your journey. You're supposed to go in this way, I feel. I agree. You should have come 10 years ago, but you, you hesitated. That's what I keep hearing. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. And can I bring up Pollyanna Bush? I feel drawn to you next. All right. Here comes Pollyanna. Pollyanna, you need to adjust your camera, though. Yeah, right, there you are. You look so tiny. There you go. <laughs> I just love your music, and I think that's why I feel drawn to you. But how can I help you tonight? With what kind of reading would you like? Uh, psychic. Okay, and you can give me a question or a specific area you want me to focus on. Well, I have two that are hot for me, so maybe you can um, just pick the one that pops out. Yeah. So one that has to do with expanding my music reach. And the other one has to do with uh, connecting with my loving partner. So with expanding your music reach, I feel like you're already doing that. Like you've been manifesting it and it's been happening. And I feel like there's a lot of work that's happening out there in the universe that you're not even aware of, but you've put it out and it's already in the works. So I want to say, be on the lookout for opportunities, be on the lookout for people, because you're supposed to meet certain people. They're going to help elevate you to expand you around the world is what I keep hearing. Um, you, you're already, I feel like on your journey, it's almost like you're on this little train ride and it's like stopping here and it's stopping there, but it's slowly making its journey around. And I say around, cause I do feel like this is going worldwide. It's not just in English. I feel like we're going to be in other languages. Um, and I see big events that you'll be invited to. And I also feel like somebody, perhaps even a producer is going to reach out to you and really kind of help you grow and expand and push you in this journey. I do see a lot of money coming, but it's not about money, but I feel like a lot of money is going to be offered. But I want to warn you because sometimes when those opportunities come, they're not exactly what they are. So if you do get something like that, really look at the details of that contract because there is some details that may not align with you. Um, the other thing I'm seeing when it comes to your connection with your, your love, because you're in a relationship, correct? No. Oh, not. Okay. I thought you were saying with somebody you're in. So I feel like you haven't allowed a lot of time for that recently. And I feel like you took a break and I want to say it's like a five-year break. Um, and and it, in the past, I feel like, cause you're such an empathic soul. You're such a open hearted soul that you allowed things or you've been attracted to people that you wanted to fix rather than they were at your level. Do you understand this? 100%. And yeah. this five years has been like so healing for you. And I believe you're healing through your music, not just other people, but yourself. And during this healing, you're raising that vibration, which is going to attract the right people. And so if you continue this journey, you're going to meet somebody on the same journey at the same level, if not above, that is like almost like the universe is like, you guys need to be together. It's like a perfect match kind of feeling. And it's like, it had to be this time. It couldn't have been sooner because there was work that needed to be done on both parts. So that feels like it's happening in the next six months and it's gonna be on some kind of an event where you're just gonna meet somebody. And when it happens, it's like, you know, there's no doubt. It's almost like you guys have known each other forever. It just falls into place. It's so comfortable and that's the one. And at first it's gonna be so good, you're gonna doubt it and you're gonna push it away. But I want you to remember this conversation and remember this and give into it and allow it to happen because part of you wants to give so much to everybody else but doesn't wanna do that for you. Sometimes you put you on hold and put everybody else first. And so this is all about you and you have a hard time with that, okay? So I'm gonna leave that with you, but your music is helping so many people that you don't even know. And I feel like in other languages, so be on the lookout for that, it's coming, okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and let me work with you, um, Kiki. Uh, uh, Kiki, here, I'm bringing her up. There she is. Hi, Kiki, how are you? Oh, I can't hear. Can we turn your vo volume up? Can you see now? Barely, but I can at least hear you. <laughs> um, what okay. kind of reading did you want? Uh, sorry, Psychic. Okay. Is there anything, um, any specific question? Um, I kind of getting the piggyback from these last two readings. I'm trying to decide what to do um, with my wife, my 
my house I have and property is a lot a lot of work, and it's just me taking care of it now. So sometimes I'm thinking of selling it and moving. It's funny that you um, see you. I see you actually do sell it. I see you moving somewhere and can living somewhere where that's like you're kind of an outgoing like person who likes to be around people and I feel like you're going to be somewhere where you get to have a lot of outings and a lot of gatherings with friends and it's a lot warmer I don't know where you live but it feels warmer where you go so I do see some changes and I don't know if you have arthritis but I feel joint issues and I feel like where you move it's so much better on your joints that you feel 20 years younger so I do see this happening and I feel like it happens rather fast because something kind of triggers you to move I don't know what it is, but it feels like it's happening pretty soon here where you just get on the ready and you're just like, all right, and you sell your house quick and you're out of there. Um, I see you moving into a really nice modern place, but with a beautiful view. So I think it's really important to have a beautiful view. I see mountains in my view, but it's warmer than where you're at. So I hope that helps. Does that make sense? It does because I keep thinking about the <laughs> Okay. So I think it's time. I keep, yeah, I keep hearing it's time. You'll you're gonna have something that's gonna happen. It's gonna be like a switch, and you just do it. So I feel like it's coming really any day now. Right. I'm gonna leave you with that, Kiki. I think you froze up. Yeah, but, Kiki. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're you don't have a good internet connection, but we got the idea. Do How have, about one, we have time for one more? Okay. One more. Let me work with Pat. She's been waiting so patiently. Oh, we love Pat. Okay, there she is. Whoops. Hi, Pat. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How can I help I you? Know, well, I, I'd like a psychic reading. I felt that I was going to meet a new male partner. And you're a widow, yes? Uh, I'm divorced. Yes. Oh, okay. Why did I feel like you were a widow? Do you have an ex-husband that's in spirit? No, no. He's alive. He's, he's, he's regional. You know, okay. he supports me. We support each other. That's fine. I just felt a male energy and spirit that was trying to help you find a new male. That's okay. what. It, <laughs> so that's why I thought it was a husband, but maybe it's like another family member. But okay. when I come with you, um, I do feel like you're so open and you're so loving and you're so ready. Um, but it's difficult. You also have a lot of energy for somebody your age. I keep hearing. I feel like you're very active and you like to do things and you like to be social. Do you understand this? Yes. So I do think you're going to meet somebody new. I just think uh, you need to find somebody maybe that's five, six, seven years younger than you to keep. Oh, yeah. And, you that's know, feel too. yeah, because yeah, the, the people your age, they just can't keep up. Um, <laughs> and I think it's like, keep, keep getting yourself involved in outings like clubs or things that you like to do. So you're going to meet somebody who likes the same things you do. And I feel like this is going to be a good match. And because you both know what you want. It's going to happen quick. I, I want to say give it till December, but I, I feel more like yeah. September is when you meet. Okay. Yeah. That's what I felt too. September. Yeah. But by December, it's for sure. It's oh, like, that's wonderful. Are, we don't need to waste years to figure out what we want. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so oh, much. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Oh, you're so much fun. Um, and, and for those like Ellie who haven't gotten, don't worry, Charlie's going to come on shortly and he's going to do some meetings too so we had to leave some people for charlie yes. um so don't worry um, and charlie's also wonderful and kelly what a delight you are going to bring your uh, partner tangila up um and uh obviously you're very very good at the work that you do and you're wonderful at it um is there a particular uh kind of like a, a demographic group that you most enjoy working with I'll be honest, um, I have clients from all over the world and from all different um, things, but at my specialties, I'm going to be honest, <laughs> because Spirit uses my data bank of information, which is my life. So my specialty is alcoholics and Spirit, deadbeat dads and Spirit, um, sons that have passed. I lost my son at, when he was 20, um, and dysfunctional families in Spirit. They're my favorite. <laughs> well thank you for doing the hard work i mean that's beautiful oh thank you thank you yeah uh well for people who want more experience of her uh whoops it's uh i went to your website and it's an error so we'll go to soul search um again 
Kelly, like all of the people you're seeing tonight, can be found on Soul Search, and there she is. Um, and she does so many wonderful things. So I suggest find her profile on Soul Search. It's just easy. Go to Soul Search, put in Medium Kelly, and then you can contact her and um, establish some connection to uh, possibly get a, a, a really lengthy, wonderful psychic reading from this wonderful person. And Scott, if you scroll down, her website is there as well. So you can click on that link um, right there on the on the page. Um, visit the website mediumkelly.com. Yeah, by the way. There she is. <laughs> there. And uh, so the other way, then, if you want to go straight to her website, it's Medium Kelly, spelled K E L L E Y dot com. Medium Kelly, K E L L E Y dot com. So, sorry, I bought a What's that, Kelly? I spelled my name wrong. I bought every one of the domain names that'll go to my, my website. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we also got confused when I first made yeah. the before you we, we missed that first email, so I apologize. Okay, that's why I said I bought them all so if you type up the wrong Kelly name at the end it still goes to me well you know what's perfect Kelly is that you really enjoyed Pollyanna Bush's music and guess who's coming on next okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right we're going to bring Pollyanna back up for her second song for the night hopefully feeling a little bit inspired now that she knows that she's going to good love coming yeah it's all lining up <laughs> It's all lined up. <laughs> it's good to relax and know that. So thank you, Kelly. That was wonderful. Um, so, uh, Rhea, you inspired me so much. Uh, I feel such a kindred spirit with you. Uh, I've been doing a lot of time barefoot on the ground. Like every morning I get up. I go, I say good morning to Gaia and my feet are naked on the ground and I walk naked on the ground and I breathe and I feel her. And it was quite a, a re, it was like a, a relationship that got to be repaired because I had made a decision really early on in my life that, that I was out of here, you know. Um, and then when I started walking naked on the ground, I realized that I had pushed Mother Gaia away and decided she she wasn't my home, and so she and I had a good conversation. <laughs> and it's it's amazing. I'm I have conversations with flowers and plants, and every day I'm feeling informed and connected and loved by and in awe of communing with um, nature, Gaia, grounding. So. For those folks that haven't been spending any time barefoot, I highly re recommend that. And I highly recommend, I'm with you, Rhea, on the singing in nature. I do it every day. It's just put me back together as a human being. I'm just feeling, oh, I am home. I am whole. And so this song that I, I want to share, that I am going to share, is called Touchstone, actually. And... For me, this is about breath. It's about finding that place within that is home. It's about each of us being that light for each other because we are that. And I echo what has been said before too also in that we are here to remind each other that we each have a superpower. We each can be a, a, a home coming, calling, reminding to each other, even just with a smile, with a, with a hello, with a let me hear what you have to say, like really slowing down and taking the time and also doing that for ourselves. So when I was five, I realized that was my mission, actually. I was five and I was in my first church choir and we were called the Cherubs. And I took that mission quite seriously. So in the choir, in the church, I realized, oh, this is my mission here too, to sing and call people home to themselves. Even if I didn't have those exact words as, as a five-year-old, I had the knowing. So as I sing this song, I, I welcome you to hum, to sing, to move, to breathe, uh, take your shoes off. <laughs> 
connect with the earth. Know that you are that homecoming for yourself. Know that you are that homecoming for someone. Touch stone where your worthiness is known. Where the breath beats the bone. Breath beats the bone. Oh,
lots of love and twinkles and holding that vision that Kelly had for Pollyanna, both for her love life and for her career, because it's true. The world needs to hear you beautiful music, Pollyanna. And, thank you. Um, you know, and thank you for really connecting us to our touchstone. And I'm sure, you know, I was noticing what touchstone meant to me and maybe some of the others in the audience had an experience like that as well. A reminder one more time that you can get all things Pollyanna uh, by going to her website, her name, Pollyanna Bush, P-O-L-L-Y-A-N-N-A-B-U-S-H.com. And you also uh, do vocal instruction. You do piano training, uh, healing through music. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting, actually, that it kind of worked out having both you and Ray Amana both on the show, because you really are kind of like kindred sisters, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> singing to nature, helping people find their voice, um, and then providing us with such inspirational music. Um, so congratulations, you just met a soul sister tonight. Yes. <laughs> uh, and yeah. it's great to have you back on the show. We are not going to go two years. Um, let's, uh, no. let's, let's have you come back again in the fall, okay? Uh, okay, absolutely. Thank you for inviting me. Great. Good to see you again, Pollyanna. Good to see you. All right. Well, we have a really fun, fun thing happening. We've got Charlie, also known as Mr. Tangila. This man is not only an incredible psychic, but he is married to one of the great women on the planet, and that is Tangila. So here he is, and uh, whatever you might want to add about this brilliant psychic who happens to be your husband. Oh, sure. No, it's my pleasure. And I see Omashar already has his hand up. So uh -huh. I won't keep Omashar waiting too long. But I'm so excited to introduce my husband, Charlie Lanson, to the show. A lot of you guys have seen him. And he is a sacred fire alchemist. And you can ask him a little bit more about what that is. An advanced intuitive master teacher and healer. And he's here to support you in your emotional physical healing and soul remembrance. He provides channeled angel and ascended master readings and healings, mastery coaching, Holy Spirit energy healing, soul activations, intuitive counseling, and resurrection and self-mastery coaching, and much more. And he works with the sacred flames to help you transmute limiting energies into ascension, ascension frequencies for your expansion and spiritual transformation. He is offering in-person sessions in his office in, Sed in Sedona, but also does remote sessions via Zoom. And of course, he's here with us uh, in the Bay Area right now um, at the Burlingame Enlightenment Expo tomorrow. And he's going to be giving a talk at 1 p.m. on understanding the connection to your I Am presence and the Ascended Host for rapid transformation in your life. And for all of you tuning in tomorrow to the uh, Sacred Sunday show, you'll be able to see that live stream. And so, Charlie, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Tangela. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, it's a great show. The musicians have been awesome. Um, and like Kelly was saying, I, I go to the, I go past the psychic planes and work right with the I am presence and uh, the angelic realm. So those of you that do want a reading, um, just um, yeah, put your hand up and, and come with a question like Kelly said. Um, what I did want to add is uh, the, the sound, the things that just recently have come into my consciousness. And I never thought of myself as like a, a sound healer. Uh, but now that I've been doing fairs in public, I, I use like I, I, I do I am decrees and pray over people uh, for their transformation, even in public. And I do it very low. And I've been getting a lot of comments of people thinking I'm speaking all in different languages and all this stuff because it starts flowing. And, um, and another thing in Mount Shasta the other last week, a uh, friend of mine and a friend of the show, Bana, and uh, another friend of ours got called to just walk up above the tree line 
and we just started singing like toning until and i don't consider myself a singer but all of a sudden this like whole harmonics just started happening and i felt that same thing um with the with the mountain just like sending us love back it was very powerful um there's something going on with like um especially with like sets of three people doing these these alignments and harmonizing your voice it's very powerful but yeah, without further ado, who do we have here? All right, Kelly, why don't we? <laughs> want me to bring Kelly up? Yes. We have Kelly Omashar and Ellie all waiting. So okay, great. welcome, Kelly. <laughs> I love getting your readings. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, how do you, how do you want, what do you need from me? What, just a question or topic that you're looking for? I'm really going in a new direction in life. We opened a crystal store in April. So I'm just really, um, nothing has flowed the way it, I would want it to flow, but I know everything happens for a reason. So I'm trusting. And I just want to see what you see for the crystal store in my business. It is, it is secure. There is a huge wave of, um, like the earth herself is about to bring a lot of, I guess you could call disciples into first degree initiates, which is going to be a wave of seekers. And you know, just like as we all are, like we begin, all of a sudden you start getting interested in crystals. And it, it's like, it is so it's going to be a thing. And it, but it's the crystal stores will be successful, but it is going to be basically a, a, like a stage for people to ask you questions and you start channeling wisdom to people and it's like going it's jumping into their aura it's like you're you're planting seeds within people that is going to accelerate it what took you and i 12 or 15 years to kind of work through it will be doing in six months with other people our students are going to begin accelerating and being caught right up to us very quickly but this is this is a success and financially I see like the, the country itself is gonna really start doing a lot better in the next year anyway. So like a lot of the things that keep people pinching their pennies is is gonna start releasing. Okay. okay. So so don't yeah, don't let it go and just um you know your guides are your guides are applauding you, you know, your team is applauding you. So you're you followed your guidance to to have a bigger platform than just being in an office around Zoom doing readings. It's like it's like something else sing to your crystals too i know you you love your crystals but like sing to them they will attract the people yes so, okay i was hoping yeah i've been rearranging around the store to get more people in <laughs> but it is and, and play with it a little bit and and i mean i know you're very sensitive so i know you can feel the energies but sing put on what the music you like and um and, and like cast all fears to the wind there's nothing to fear that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, All Charlie, right. would you be willing to work with Ellie? She's been patiently waiting. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, go ahead, Ellie. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, hi, Charles. I, uh, yeah, I'm like, it's always been all about work most of my life. So I don't want to ask about that. I want to ask about my personal life. And, um, you know, if, if uh, when, well, if you see, when you see a partner, when, when you see me actually meeting a mutual uh, romantic life partner, and maybe how? Uh, it is, right now your guides are working with you on your four legs, your, your mental body, your physical body, your emotional body, and your astro, your uh, ethereal body. And you've done a lot of work behind the scenes without even really understanding it yourself. Okay. So don't let these pressures start. Like um, when you feel these pressures come up, like, is this ever going to happen? This kind of thing really just like, don't stuff it, but don't, it's not about releasing it. It's about like alchemizing that frequency, okay? But yeah, I believe there's actually somebody in your purview already. Somebody has already like noticed you and maybe you're just not 
point connecting, go outside your, your comfort zone just a little bit, you know, go to a different coffee shop, a different, you know, just, just get out a little bit, but do it on a day that you're, do it on days that you're actually taking off from work, you know, where you are relaxed without the expectation. And, and even if you go on a date, just, it doesn't need to be, it can be like a friend and like with no expectations because you're really working in this um, way to be like an actual divine relationship. That's, that's just love. There's no need, you know, it's like, you just want to be with each other and, and, and you're not, a, it's like no codependency, I guess you could say. Okay. But this is what you're working in. Um, you were probably how long has it been since you've been, had a partner? Oh, my goodness. It's been a long time, especially for all the Scorpio, like nine years. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, I believe you're going to, so this is, a, they're showing me like a couple people. So I think that it's almost like you're going to have a practice one, like somebody that you can have absolute fun with and, and enjoy your time with, but it's going to sort of be like a test to make sure you don't get attached and codependent. Okay. So even no matter how, how hard you're falling for them to, to still go home at night and be like, am I okay with or without, you know, you've worked very hard. This cycle has allowed you to really become independent and, but it's not about being independent and being like, I'm a strong woman, but like being sovereign, even in a relationship. Okay. Even when you're married to still be sovereign, like it's like, a, it's something like this that they're working with, but you are going to be like, the wedding is going to be like the divine groom. It does, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's like a physical wedding, but it's going to be like a alchemical wedding within you and with this person. But it is like you got hope written right over your head. Like this is don't lose hope. And and the, I know a lot of people when you're trying to manifest, you're trying, you know, you're working on this kind of thing. Focus on belief. But your guides are saying it's not the belief; it's the faith. You know, like you let go of the beliefs of certain things because beliefs sort of like create a matrix in you. Okay, just hold the faith and like be already dancing in your palace, you know, like go way bigger than you think is even possible. And so that it allows the angels to just start putting people in your path. All right. And, and timing feels like any time. From I think you have somebody that's in your purview now, maybe somebody you've already noticed that like tries to talk to you, but they might be shy. It may take, it may be part of your like getting out of your comfort zone, maybe you asking somebody to go out for coffee and just to let them know, oh, I am interested and let's just, let's go hang out. That kind of thing, or you know, or whatever it is you like to do. But it is, it's something like you may need to take that initial step just to get your, your estrogen flowing a little bit and get, you know, get that, get your magnetism going again. You know, but as soon as you make that connection, it's just going to, it's just going to turn on. All right. Okay. You said there'll be a practice one and then the real one. That's what I see. Okay. And if you don't get it on the first practice one, you'll get another practice one. You know, like it's, you want to practice being sovereign and, and really checking in because it's bringing up the deeper you know, thousands and thousands of years of attachment and what we perceive love is to be to need somebody and somebody to need us. And it's, that's really not what love is. That's, that was something in the human consciousness, but you're beginning to break through that next barrier. So that, you know, you've done a lot of inner work in this one lifetime. I mean, they just are showing like flashes of, you know, many lifetimes of, of evolution in this one. Okay. So it's, that's sometimes we you have to go through those nine years. I myself went through a decade of, you know, out of it. And then all of a sudden ran into Tangila and it was like, I've always known her. It's, you know, it, it, it just happens when you're not thinking about it. All right. So it's definitely still happening. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is. I mean, your, your every prayer must get answered, but you got to let the angels deal with it. So like pray and be very specific about what you want and say it out loud and then forget about it. Let it go. You know, if we keep thinking about it, it's like putting a magnet, aligning a horseshoe magnet to each other and just pushes it away. Our mind power pushes, but when you can let it go and let your feminine energy, your magnetism come in, it just starts attracting to you. So you wake up in the morning, do your meditation, pray for what you want, and then go about your day. 
you don't need to be in meditation hours a day or any of this kind of stuff. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you, Charles. You're welcome. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Charlie. And maybe Omashar next? Yes. Yeah, Omashar. That would be me. Hey, brother. How are you? I'm just um, wondering what's going to happen with my music over the next couple of years and what within me is stopping the wider dissemination of my gifts to the world. It is... Uh, it is not you it is a timing it's a just a it's a divine timing and just like kelly with the crystal shop it's like being you're you're building like a, a stage or a platform that will then explode because people are going to be seeking you know people's people's ears are not going to be able to hear harder music it's it's hard to explain it's like the frequency of the earth is changing so a lot of you guys with the with the like the spiritual music and the angelic music it's like it's all it's helping raise the frequency without you knowing it i would suggest you going out do you ever go out in the street and set up your piano like you see on youtube videos and stuff like no, that? i i i don't um yeah i doubt it that i would do that however i'm listening charlie yeah no it's gonna you know th these are the things that like that'll help you catch fire i believe it's gonna be like something in public that you do that will um really ignite it but it, but it is a divine timing thing and it'll be i don't know it'll strike a chord it, do you ever yeah. sing, you sing the chord hallelujah do you ever there's something with the song hallelujah yeah, I, I I did used to sing that. Yeah, that back, song, back in the day. Sing it, keep singing it. Like do that, and and even amazing grace. You know, even for yourself. You don't even to perform. Do it for yourself. Okay, yeah. it's like a very powerful. It's bringing in like even they were talking right to pray for the maximum grace. Right, yeah. there's something with the angel of grace that's in your energy too. You're not doing anything wrong. That's one thing they want you to say. Just as these these energies of like you know wondering or impatience come up, remember patience is like is like the highest form of magic in our solar system because this is the only place we even get to practice it. Right, and and, and when you start alchemizing that patience into your power. There's nothing that can stop anything you want to do. I believe there's even more. You know, you prepared yourself for even a bigger launch pad that's even maybe more teaching, too. Like, there's something that's with your music that's going to move forward. You're very connected to your I am presence. And I believe you're channeling already, like, uh, even not just through your music, but you channel a lot when you talk to people. And so you're bringing in a lot of energy. And so it's almost like, I don't know, for lack of words, it's almost like you're undercover. You know, it's like like the, the spirit needs you to keep just bringing it in without you even knowing that you're bringing in a higher frequency through you. But you, it's an agreement that you made. But I would, I would practice just by um, intention to when you do your meditation or prayers to to go to say I I am in, I'm going into the silence, you know, four or five times a day for like five minutes, and you'll start getting to this place where you can like hear your own I am presence talk to you like on a cell phone, you know, you can really connect with your higher self, and you can also recharge your magnetism. There's certain breathwork things they're showing me too that'll start magnetizing. But when you start practicing these practices of super magnetizing your aura and your electromagnetic field, you want to make sure that you're thinking about what you want and not about what you don't want. Okay, because it's there's a balance to that because you become magnet to magnetic to whatever it is you're thinking about and to like catch it. Okay. Thank you so much. And I realize we have one more, Kathy. Do we have time for that, Scott? Yeah, well, you know, because Charlie's our last presenter. Um uh we let's bring Kathy up. She's been waiting. Okay, Kathy. And this is our last reading for the night. Okay. Hi, hey, Kathy. How are you? Hey, thank you. Um I have uh been well, I'm I've been wanting to move closer to my son and his wife and my granddaughter. And um, I'm also going to be coming into some money um, 
and the timeline for that keeps changing. So I kind of the questions together, um, is there a better idea of uh, when it could be not just not just from one, but a couple of different sources that'll be coming to me, um, the timeline on that. And also uh, I'm thinking, I live in California, so I'm in the San Francisco Bay area. And right now I'm in the South Bay and I'm thinking of moving up to the East Bay, which will be half the distance from them. Um, can we get a take on that? I know you're thinking about the East Bay, but I think you're gonna go farther North. Somehow, whatever plays out, I believe you're gonna keep going farther than East Bay. Um, I'm thinking the Walnut Creek area. Is it going to be farther than that? Uh, maybe that is what it is. I because I because it seems very nice. I was thinking it was more like Marin or up up in like this area, but I believe maybe it is. I don't know, but it, I can't see exactly where it is. But but it is happening. It is going to happen. All right, this is like part of your. It's like the radio, you're the, the radio channel within you, the frequency is beginning to change. Okay, so you're gonna see that even your own house no longer is on the same station as you. So you're going to move into a nicer, a nicer place or a nicer vibrational neighborhood and this like this, new vibrational friends. Okay, it's like um, your children are the impetus to, to get you up there, but I believe you're gonna like start building a new, you'll have new friends, new community, and you're gonna like live a whole, it's gonna be like a new life. It's not just gonna be a new house. Right, no, it's all of that. Right. Yeah, yeah. The first yeah. thing is establishing my point is. Yeah, no, but it is, but it is definitely, it is definitely your path. Okay. But like I said, it's especially during this time, like uh, Yuri was saying, like they call, you know, what they call, what we call Mercury retrograde is, makes you look at things again. It's like stuff comes back around and that's what causes a lot of like impatience in people. Like, ah, oh, you know, why am I back at the, you know, this kind of thing, or when is my money coming? You know, this kind of thing, just like, don't, you don't need to, cut a cord and let it go and you don't need to suppress it just breathe into it just just breathe and let it start alchemizing okay because that changes the frequency and then it doesn't come back anymore and then you start attracting and it makes it easier to not worry about timing and all this stuff all right it's more about the, the faster that you can just come into a balance of peace within yourself the faster this, everything's just going to unfold. And, and then when it does unfold, it's going to be quick, very fast, because it's like you can't stay on channel 99.1 when the dial's on 103.1. <laughs> you know, you just have to jump. It has to jump. And so that's why people will talk about timeline jumps and all these kind of things, but it's more like frequency jumps, like a whole new reality setting up. I also believe you're going to be doing some traveling. All right. <laughs> Yay, that is totally awesome. This has been a long time. See, that's also what I get flashes of. But you, you, I believe you're going to be doing traveling and getting to see some places maybe that have been on your heart for your whole life. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Ken Gielan. Absolutely. And thank you, Charlie. Thank you so much for taking the time to do so many wonderful readings. Um, and I want to encourage people. Listen, I know a lot of you are Bay Area people. Come tomorrow to Burlingame. That's right down by San Francisco Airport. Get a, a direct reading from Charlie. Uh, meet Tangela and myself in person. Um, and I'll be there. And what's going to happen is Eden Amador, who, of course, is a regular on the show, um, and uh, myself and now Tangela are all going to share tips, tools, and good stuff for how to have more enlightening moments in your life how to enlighten our lives and it's not just getting tapped on the head but there's things we can do to raise our vibration and charlie is also going to share wonderful tips tools and practices for how to raise the vibration so join us tomorrow if at all possible and of course for those of you who can't join us in person down in burlingame we are going to do a sacred sunday show it's um, a special it's free for all of our global peace tribers um, uh, but make sure you check the email that I sent out today because it has a unique Zoom Room link just for tomorrow. 
just for tomorrow's Sacred Sunday show. Um, so you can get a whole hour of Charlie tomorrow uh, as he'll be on the Sacred Sunday show. So we'll have Omushar songs, Tanjila, Eden and I giving tools, and then an hour with Charlie. It's going to be good. Um, good. Amazing. Oh, Kathy's saying she didn't receive an email today. Well, hopefully, uh, Kathy, you, you didn't get it at all? Well, if you're, well, yeah, you're in our Zoom room, so you're a subscriber. Check your email. I sent it out this morning. Um, and I probably will send out one more in the morning just to make sure everybody has the proper email address. Okay, Carol is saying she got the email. Great. Okay. So yeah, most, most of and Kathy was at Santa Clara with us. So Kathy, thanks for coming to Santa Clara. Hope you can come to Burlingame tomorrow and see us live again. But um, for all of you in the Bay Area who are watching, definitely come check us out. You can still register in advance. Just go to soulsearch.io backslash Berlin Game Expo. We have amazing readers and healers. You can come get a healing and your own personal reading from Charlie. He does do Holy Sacred, Holy Spirit healings all, all at the expo uh, where he's praying over people and doing chanting and healing. So you can experience that for yourself live. Yuri will be there with her Amanita mushrooms. And we have many, you have Echo Forest doing sound healing and many amazing Akashic Records sound healers. Um, tarot, astrology, and much more. So definitely come check us out tomorrow live if you can. Come see Scott, Eden, and myself at 12 noon. We have talks starting at 10 a.m. And Yuri's actually going to do a new moon um, activation ceremony quarter to 10 to open up the show. So definitely come see us live. We'll also be in Dublin next weekend in the East Bay um on august 10th so we'll be at the double holiday dublin holiday inn in the east bay august 10th, 10th so if you can't make it to burlingame come see us in dublin we'll be in both places and for those of you who aren't in the bay area we will be live streaming all of our talks both tomorrow as well as next saturday so you can tune in on our youtube channel we'll be doing the special sacred sunday show with scott and also live streaming Charlie's um, as the Global Peace Tribe show. But otherwise, you can watch all of the rest of the talks on our live stream on YouTube all day tomorrow, as well as all day next Saturday. So we have a lot going on. If you're not on our mailing list, join our mailing list because we have so many live events, so many online events. And also, um, just a reminder, Charlie does do a free online meditation and activation every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. That's live on our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram channels. And John Gray does a free Radiant Mind meditation every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Um, and that's also on our Soul Search YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram channels. So every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., you can meditate with us live at uh, with John Gray leading that meditation, and then with Charlie on Thursdays at 8 a.m., leading uh, Merkaba Enlightenment Activation and Meditation as well. So we have so many different online events going on. We invite all of you guys to be a part of our community, join our Soul Search Facebook group, and we hope to see you guys soon. Beautiful. And hey, speaking of Charlie, we've got to show um, where you can get more Charlie and where oh, yeah. you can go. <laughs> you go to Soul Search. And again, if you put in the profile, Charlie Lampson, uh, that's where you can get more information about him. You can contact him um, and learn all about his wonderful work that he does. Um, and of course, you got a chance to see what a brilliant reader he is. So thank you, Charlie, for those beautiful readings tonight. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yes. yes I'm excited to see you soon, Scott. And Omar we will see you tomorrow online as well. Absolutely. And I've got some Global Peace Tribe announcements, and then we'll come back one more time to Tangila. Um, and our first Global Peace Tribe announcement, I actually have somebody who's going to present about that, and it's our friend Doug May. Hey, welcome back to the Awakening World, Doug. Thanks a lot, Scott. What do you got? What do you got for us tonight? What are you going to share? Well, um, late last year, the Kogi Mamos sent a message out to the world saying that the Earth Mother was in need of healing and was putting out 
uh, a call to people around the world to rally in support of her, and in particular to support the Kogi shamans in, in enabling uh, their healing work around the world. And in February, the Tayuna Foundation, who works with the Mamos and Zagas, the male and female shamans, uh, started a pilot program where non-Indigenous people are being trained in their perspective on how you achieve personal and planetary energetic balance, uh, how you keep your own uh, mind clean so that uh, that actually in and of itself helps heal the earth. So we're still early in formulating this thing, but later in this month, August 24th and 25th, the Tayuna Foundation is having another beginner training for people who want to get engaged with this work. And it's a very deep and personal connection uh, with the Earth Mother, and uh, you get some direct working with the shamans. Uh, it's not the kind of thing that everybody's going to jump in for, but I wanted to make sure that this community uh, got the word so that people who are called to it can jump on it. Beautiful. Thank you. And it, how was your experience? Is there anything you can share about your experience of doing the training? Um, uh, it's challenging. Um, it's some very deep, uh, mindfulness demands it uh, we're going through a struggle of grappling with concepts that are inherent to their worldview that don't obviously translate into American English so I find that there's a much bigger energy demand from each of the events than I ever expect it usually takes me several days to recover fully uh, but I've also been going deeper and having a much more powerful energetic connection with the Earth Mother than uh, pretty much any time in my life. And the uh, the connection in the small group of us who are doing it is very powerful. And uh, we're, some of us are meeting regularly every week uh, to connect around the larger work and uh, it's almost like a new phase of our life has opened up for each of us. Wow. Uh, well, I've put a lot of the information into the chat box, and so people can get it there. Um, but I'm also going to pull up the website where people can get the information about it. Um, and Doug, do you know how how much how available it is with the um, with the number of participants they are will have in this next group? Because I know it's very small and intimate. Uh, I don't have a hard number. Nothing has been set. Okay. Um, there, this is very much being taken almost on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of seeing what happens, working with the energies, trying new things. Uh, so uh, we really don't have an answer for how big this might get yet. Well, and uh, we're looking for people to help us discover the right answer to that number. Okay, well, here's where you can get more information. Uh, and for you watching on Facebook or YouTube, just go to teyuna.org, T-E-Y-U-N-A.org. And that's where you can see the upcoming sessions that are coming in. You can learn more about their work. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Koji people, uh, they are extraordinary. And they are really probably as tapped in as anyone. Um and uh, you can even go back to our YouTube channel and find when we had, um, uh, we've had two shows dedicated to the Koji people and to the Teyuna Foundation. So uh, this is a, a powerful work. And Doug, thank you for letting me know that they're going to be adding more workshops. Thank you for your commitment. Even though it was hard work, I get that it was very transformational for you. And I really appreciate you coming on to the Awakening World. Thank you so much. Thank you. Got a couple of other announcements. Um, there's a lot happening this week. You know, we are approaching uh, a very painful anniversary, and that is the anniversary of when the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and then on Nagasaki. 
And every year, um, a lot of our friends uh, from Unity Earth, including Fumi, we've had Fumi on the show many times, um, lead some ceremonies. And so uh, once again, there's going to be a, um, uh, a whole day full of honoring uh, peace. Uh, they call it Nuclear Prayer Day. There's going to be a global silent minute. And I really want to encourage everybody, at the very least, put this into your um, phone, um, put it into your calendar to uh, set aside, I'd suggest five minutes uh, before and after so that we're all tuning in together all around the world. Um, and that would be on August the 5th, coming up this week. Um, and uh, 4.15 Pacific time, 7.15 for those of you on the East Coast. Um, and that's going to be the Global Silent Minute this uh, August 5th, which is this Monday. Um, please do take time and put it into your calendars right now. Write it down. Monday, August 5th, um, tuning in to the Global Silent Minute. 4.15 Pacific time. 7.15 Eastern. And uh, that's all. I'll do that. Also, uh, our beloved brother Omichar is going to be in Japan for Peace Day. You know, there's this big international Peace Day coming up on September 21st. A lot of things taking place before then. And our beloved brother Omichar will be in Japan. We'll be doing some shows with Omichar hosting um, and sharing with us what's going on in Japan. So that's very exciting. Also, you may recall that we frequently collaborate with Global Coherence Pulse, and they're going to be doing another Saturday show on Saturday, August 17th. That's two weeks from today. But put it in your calendars, 12 noon Pacific, 3 o'clock Eastern. And Sister Jenna, who we love, Sister Jenna, who's been on the show a few times. I was with her in Sedona at the film festival, hosted her and her movie. Um, so please join Global Coherence Pulse two weeks from today at 12 noon Pacific time, three o'clock Eastern. And then again, finally, just uh, join us for the Sacred Sunday show. I will put the link uh, to where you can register into the chat box for our Zoom rumors. But for those of you that are not in our Zoom room, who are watching on Facebook or on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, and I wanna invite you to join the Global Peace Tribe. And it's easy. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com, and that's where you can learn all about us and all the different people we have on the show. Marianne Williamson, who was just on last week, uh, Greg Braden, Reverend Michael Beckwith, all these beautiful people that are uh, on the show, and then click register for the new season, um, and that'll take you to our registration page. You can register for as low as $22. We provide always a show on Wednesday night and Saturday night, but a lot of special events like tomorrow's Sacred Sunday show. And we do at least one Sacred Sunday show a month now. We do a film series with Lori Grace. Uh, we have special events like last week with Marianne Williamson. And it's a beautiful community of like-minded souls that you can become a part of. So please join the Global Peace Tribe. Join us, come and be with us. And then we can come into the Zoom room. You can be... Um, called upon uh, when we have psychics and healers to get readings like you saw some of our people getting today. So there's a lot of wonderful reasons to join the Global Peace Tribe. So please do join us. Um, all right. Well, I call him the Alpha and Omega Man because we start and end almost all of our shows with our beloved Omashar. So it's been quite a night. And Omashar, I'm turning it over to wrap it up. And then we'll have a final word from uh, Tangila.
faithful and the new is waiting patiently. Take the step and you will see all you can dream. gallery view for those of us who are still with and thank you everybody who's still with us tonight i know it's getting late um but thank you so much for twinkling our beloved omar Sharm. thank you and if you're not with us we can still feel you <laughs> that's right and all the people watching you know more and more people are watching on facebook um and, and watching the replays and recordings so uh, i want to acknowledge all of them as well thank you omar Shar. and i'm excited about our sacred sunday show tomorrow morning I know I've already been um, uh, I'm going to play a brand new song and something else, but I am because I love our sacred Sundays uh, once a month is good because yeah. I also love sleeping in sacred Sundays. So, <laughs> however, um, once a month and it's at 12 noon tomorrow. So I know it's like total gentleman's hours. Thank you so pleasure. much. My pleasure. I love you so much. I'll see you tomorrow, partner. Bye. All right. Tangila, another wonderful collaboration between the global peace tribe and soul search any last announcements or thoughts that you want to share i wanted to thank everyone for being here for co-creating this beautiful show and energy together all of our amazing guests and then just one last time i will just invite everyone to come join us in burlingame this tomorrow if you can you can still register for free uh, so, and it's at the Embassy Suites by Hilton San Francisco Airport Waterfront. We have special events, talk by John Gray, gallery readings, and of course, our special guest speakers all day, including you can see right here, 12 noon, Scott and Eden 
tips and tools and practices for enlightening our lives. And Charlie Lampson, understanding the connection to your I am presence and the ascended host for rapid transformation in your life. So hopefully you guys can join us live if you are in the Bay Area. And if not, tune in for our Sacred Sunday show tomorrow, as well as our live stream all day. And we do have weekly free meditations. You can join us every Thursday. Charlie leads an enlightened activation meditation session every Thursday at 8 a.m. You can find out more here, but just tune in for free on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. And John Gray also does a free radiant mind meditation every week, every Wednesday, 7 a.m. And you can also find all of the replays here as well. So you can tune in and watch the replays and we have a relationship mastery class starting on Wednesday, August 14th with John Gray. It's going to be six weeks. You can ask your own questions about your own personal relationships to John. So that he never does online classes, but he's doing this with us. So it is really an amazing experience. It's only $96 for six weeks. So it is an amazing opportunity to learn from a master of love and relationships. And you can find that also at soulsearch.io. So join us here for lots of amazing experiences. Uh, for classes and of course for community and we just love um, building with you guys Scott and the full global peace tribe so thank you all so much for your beautiful energy and sharing beautiful thank you and thank you Charlie um, and I'll bring up Dr. Joanna I see she's still with us um, and of course Omar Shar um, and I uh, always like to bring on the people that are still with us that presented and uh, Pollyanna Bush. Oh, no, that's a f Oh, there she is with us still. Great. Yeah, this lady, Bonnie. All right. I brought up her web page. Very interesting. Oh, my God. Hmm. You'll have to hear what she had to say on a replay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dr. Joanne, people really loved and appreciated everything you were saying. So we're going to have to have you back. And I'll also be doing an Instagram live with you soon as well. Thank to you. Dive even, to dive even deeper into the. Um, Chaldean numerology. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Joanne, Pollyanna, Omashar, Charlie, and of course, Tangila. See thank many you. of you tomorrow, either online or in person. Have a beautiful evening, everybody. Have thank a very safe Sunday. Thank you, Scott. Thank, thank you, you Scott. Lots of love. Bye.